guys, you're back with The Rock, and today I'm going to be discussing the fate of the seven Warlords of the Sea, because it seems like almost every other One Piece YouTuber is doing that in the last week or two, so why not throw our names in the hat? Probably for good reason as well, because it looks like we're going to be approaching the end of Act 3 of Wano, which should mean that we should get some more world building coming up soon, potentially finding out what happened to the active warlords after uh, the marines descended upon their respective islands. So right now I'm on the One Piece wiki, which you know is a great source for One Piece content, despite what your teachers would have had you believe uh, growing up in high school, that Wikipedia wikis aren't, aren't a great place for knowledge. Uh, we disagree here in 2021. So right now, the One Piece wiki has the active uh, members before the dissolution being uh, Mihawk, Kuma, Hancock, Buggy, and Weevil. Um, for the topics of this conversation, we are not going to be talking about Kuma because he is wrapped up in the incident happening in Mary Joie, which we can discuss in, a, in another video, trying to predict the fates of what happens to those folks. So today, um, we're going to be talking about Mihawk, Hancock, Buggy, and Weevil. So let's start off first with my namesake and your favorite, Dracul Mihawk. So interesting case, right? And as in interesting as in uh, this should probably be the most predictable outcome. Uh, so you know, many people out there argue about if Mihawk is Admiral level, if Mihawk is Yonko level, and there is a lot of arguments on both sides that could be convincing one way or the other. I'm personally in the camp of Mihawk being Admiral or <laughs> oh heavens no being Yonko level, excuse my tongue. Uh mainly because again I I'm a big believer in that rivalry with Shanks. I know people say that he fought with Shanks before he became a Yonko and people say that just because you're the world's strongest swordsman doesn't mean that it, you know, you are the, the strongest person in the world, right? There are many people with the sword, but perhaps being, you know, strong as stronger or strongest as a character has more to do than just being the best at using your sword, which is a fair argument. But from a narrative standpoint, you know, we just had Zoro uh, cut Kaido, right? You know, strong character with the highest bond we've seen so far, uh, strongest uh, creature amongst all living things. I think it would be pretty underwhelming if Zoro, the straw hat who, whose goal is primarily aligned with fighting and, and, and being a strong fighter, you know, ends up having an endgame opponent who is weaker than Yonko or um, at the very least fights an opponent who defeated Mihawk and Mihawk is, you know, weaker than Yonko. Either case, it looks pretty bad for Zoro. So I'm going to stick my uh, vote in for Mihawk being Yonko level, which does not mean great things for the Marines who are coming after him. So my prediction for what happens to the Marines um, who are doing a Buster-like attack, Buster Call-like attack on Mihawk's island is that they're pretty much all going to get decimated. I think he's going to cut down all of those ships. And the biggest question isn't whether or not you know, they get blown uh, blown away, it's, does he stay? Because even though I do think he's Yonko level, doesn't seem like he has a crew. Maybe he does um, that we just haven't been introduced to yet. Maybe his crew <laughs> um, involves Perona and, and those uh, human, human drills. Who knows? Um, but if he doesn't have a crew, uh, it'd be pretty unrealistic for him to just stay stationary in one island. Because at that point, Maybe they just send an admiral or two after him, uh, and then you know he's a sitting duck. So I think Mihawk takes down the battleships and flees uh, his island. On to Miss Boa Hancock. And so this outcome is the one that I am most interested in because finally I think we get to power scale Kobe. And so Kobe, and let's look him up quickly in the, uh, the wiki here, if I can find the search bar. So Kobe, um, one of the first characters we were ever introduced to, started off as a weakling but had ambitions of becoming a admiral one day. 
um, even said as much to Luffy when they uh, met up again uh, back in Water 7. Um, I have high hopes for Kobe, right? I, I think he is going to be an admiral one day, and it's about time we start you know, moving him up the ranks. And there is no better way of doing that, in my opinion now, of giving him, um, you know, not to bury the lead here, but the only uh, successful capture of a warlord that comes out of this entire thing. I think Boa Hancock is the only person uh, remaining of the four, seven warlords who's going to be defeated and who's going to be captured. I think he takes her down. Um, does he have, have help taking down the rest of the Kucha pirates? Maybe. Maybe he does. I, 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 I don't think he's going to solo the entire crew, <laughs> obviously. But I do think that it's about time we you know, power scale him, uh, maybe, maybe move him up the ranks. Uh, I had a theory one time, because it, it's, it's curious that he's only a captain level, I think. You know, why isn't he uh, higher? Um, especially since Kuros, which I, I know people probably don't give a lot of respect to him. You know, he called him uh, strong, and Kuros was able to take down uh, one of the commanders of Doflamingo, who was no slouch himself. So seems like Kobe should be a little bit higher than captain level. Maybe there's a, an agenda going on in the Marines to keep him down, but uh, it could be that this victory over Hancock is what propels him to becoming potentially a vice admiral after this arc. And, and actually, that's my prediction for him, right? I think Hancock goes down, and I think they have no choice uh, but to promote Kobe to being a vice admiral after this feat. Maybe he'll display some, you know, advanced conquerors. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, he should do something impressive. Um, and he should take her down. So I think Boa Hancock is going down. And who knows where her story arc goes from there. Maybe she's involved in some kind of tie-in with whatever the crew does post-Wano. Uh, we'll see. Buggy the Clown. So <laughs> so if we, were just, if we were to take the story at face value, um, mostly, right, and not be analysts and not look into this too deeply, uh, absolutely, Buggy and his crew should be captured immediately. They should have no problems taking him down, especially since Hydruden uh, took away all the uh, giants from them. So they have no giants protecting them. It's just him, his crew, and yeah, some strong prisoners from Impel down. But hey, that's a Buster Gall call, my guys. Uh, should, shouldn't be able to withstand all of that. But I do think Buggy escapes. With all of his crew, I couldn't tell you. But I do think the Marines will manage to take down the prisoners who escaped Impel Down. It'll be a good moral victory there. But I think somehow Buggy escapes. Uh, here's, a, <laughs> here's a crazy theory. Um, have nothing to really back this up. But the last time we saw Shanks, seems like he was heading to a wedding of some sorts. So maybe he goes, he picks up Buddy Buggy because maybe he wants him there for some reason. And uh, maybe that's how uh, Buggy escapes. Shanks comes by, picks him up. They escape the Marines. And shoot, maybe his, his crew escapes too because a Yonko arrived. But I definitely think Buggy's going to find a way um, to escape all of this um, somehow. And right now, my running theory is that Shanks comes in uh, and helps him out to save the day in connection to that wedding that we saw that he was going to. All right. And finally, Edward Weevil. How lame would it be uh, if Weevil, who hasn't even interacted with the main crew yet, uh, somehow manages to be taken down um, during all of this? Be pretty lame, right? Which is why I don't think it's going to happen. Um, I think he's just going to be too powerful uh, for them. He's going to defeat them. He's going to escape. And he's going to go somewhere. Has to meet the crew at, at some point because he's been given way too much screen time and way too much hype uh, for it to go any other way. Not sure, though, how he fits into the story. Um, Oda just puts in a powerful character, potentially related to Whitebeard, has to serve some purpose, because, again, he has a ton of panel time. But your guess is as good as mine, but I think that Weevil will ultimately uh, defeat the Marines and escape, and so... We will find out at some point what the final verdict is. Dracula Mihawk escapes, defeats the Marines. Boa Hancock, she gets caught in all of this. She's defeated by Kobe, and Kobe becomes a vice admiral. 
Buggy somehow escapes potentially with the aid of Shanks, and Weevil also escapes by defeating the Marines. But that is just my running theory. May change in the future depending on what happens, but I'm hoping we don't have to wait too long to hear how this turns out. But what are your thoughts? Let me know if you agree or if you disagree. Post your own theories uh, below. Uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.